So, um, to, today what we're going to be talking about is rethinking evangelism. Okay, so I have notes somewhere. I don't know where they are. Uh, so, in the past, we looked at um, a, a lot about discipleship, you know, growing um, as a Christian. And we looked at evangelism, how to witness to people, tactics, uh, excuse me, stuff like that. And a lot of what we did was focused on um, apologetics, you know, uh, knowing, being, excuse me, being sure of your faith, having answers, those kinds of things. But uh, in, in, our, in our very short uh, lesson today, I just want to kind of emphasize an aspect that I feel like was kind of neglected um, with all those many different lessons. Um, first off, when you are witnessing, when you are, um, you know, trying to connect with people, trying to share about Jesus, trying to, trying to stand for the faith, trying to, those kinds of things, you don't have to have all the answers. There's a lot of, there's a lot of Christian authors like Lee Strobel and stuff like that, who who make a, really a living about from from strengthening the faith, uh, answering hard questions, those kinds of things. Norman Geisler, um, McDowell, the father and son Josh and um, uh, Sean uh, McDowell, uh, and and those things are good. I'm not trying to discredit them, but you have to realize that somebody really has to be in a place of willing to listen and willing to change. And you can't argue them into seeing your point of view. And not only that, I'm not even so sure that you should. Um, if somebody has genuine questions and, and they're trying to, you know, trying to ask and try to find answers, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But when you just go in and you start arguing with with people and, and trying to, like, force them into, into accepting your point of view and forcing them, you have to make a decision right now, you have to get saved right now, people, that just kind of puts up a wall and people are like, whoa, you need to calm down. Um, I mean, I even get put off by, by Christians who come in that hot. You know what I mean? You just got to calm down a little bit. Um, so that's the first thing, first little point uh, of today. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to be one of these walking encyclopedias. You don't have to, um, you know, go into just looking for an argument. You, you don't have to do that. Um, you don't have to be like Lee Strobel. You don't have to, uh, you know, make people feel real stupid for, for doubting the faith and there's going to be some people who are really sure of their view, and they're going to think that you're stupid for your certainty of your view. Um, in fact, the Bible even talks about how it, it's foolishness. Um, you know, to, to people who hear the gospel, it's, it, it's foolishness, you know, to them. Um, and so I think that there's an element of you will be misunderstood and an element of there will always be questions and those kinds of things. And we're definitely not putting our faith in our ability to understand everything perfectly, but rather uh, in God who walks with, with us through the uncertainty. So don't feel like you have to have all the answers. You know, you can even tell people, I, I don't know. You can maybe, you can say, hey, uh, I can look into that for you, but you don't have to have all the answers to be a good Christian, to be a good witness. To and I, I, Sometimes we think, well, I'm scared to talk to people about Jesus, so maybe if I have all the answers, I'll be less scared. No, that's not how that works. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, if, if you are not really a vocal person, an outgoing kind of extroverted person, it, it's never going to get any easier for you. There are different ways you can approach it, though. Rather than going into it like an extrovert would, you can approach it from a different, uh, from a different angle. Um, sometimes just encouraging people can, can open a door. You know, hey, I, you know, I'm just when you know I was thinking about you today and I hope that that thing went well, you know, whatever, and you're just talking to them like a person, just just talking. Um, especially nowadays, this is like the golden age for introverts to be able to talk about Jesus because um, you, a lot of times people will just bring it up themselves and if you just make yourself available and just, I am, on mes messenger, uh, text on texting people, uh, stuff like that where you don't even have to do face-to-face. -face. This is like the golden era for introverts. Um, and especially because knowledge is really easily accessible. And people, if they really want to know, will search online. But here's the thing. There's kind of like a spectrum of what of, of learning. Some people go 
to find just until they find uh, a view that already agrees with the view that they've decided to take. And then there's some people who like go above and beyond, and they just keep searching and searching and searching. It's like this: the fir it, 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 it's been said that the first drink of natural science will turn somebody into an atheist, but if you finish the glass, it it'll always point you back to God. And that's kind of the thing: is is sometimes people come off as searchers, but they really or seekers, but they're not really. They're just trying to find things that will affirm what they already want to believe. They want to believe that religion is a hoax and um, it, there is no specific idea of God. It's more of a general thing. And so they, they, they search as long as it affirms that. But then when they get to something that, that points back to God, they just kind of like, eesh, you know. And so you have, to, you have to realize that people are coming from different, from different places. And the second thing I want to talk about, you don't have to be an extrovert or outgoing. When, you, when you're witnessing to people, when you're talking about Jesus, you don't have to be an extrovert. Um, you, you don't have to be someone who's just, you know, got it all together, up and at them, real disciplined, real responsible. You, you don't have to be that. You know what I mean? And there's, there's a lot of people who think that they have to be something or someone else to lead somebody to Jesus. Um, and that's just not how it is. That's just not how it is. Um, you have to be an extrovert to do door-to-door. -door. You have to do an ex be an extrovert to shove Jesus down people's throats. Um, but if you're trying to actually, you know, um, go boldly where no man has gone before, a lot of it you, it's not required that you're an extrovert. Maybe you're just trying the wrong methods. So, you know, God made you specifically you. And I think that's really great advice. Be you. And find a way that you can tell people about Jesus and you can, um, you know, you can evangelize and stuff like that without having to try to be like someone else or follow how somebody else does it. God gave you your own talents. He gave you your own um, voice. And so instead of trying to copy how other people are doing something, find a way that you can utilize your skills. I know some people uh, who, you know, maybe wear verses on their jerseys when they're exercising. Um, you know, like you see some athletes, you know, writing it on their foreheads and stuff or, or something like that. Um, you see some people who just post about it online and, and they're not really extrovert people. And so it kind of helps them to still be able to get um, a message out there. Uh, when Christianity first started spreading, it wasn't, it wasn't missionaries that spread the church. I mean, obviously there were the early people like Paul. He was one of the first, you know, missionaries. And, and Peter, who evidently was in Rome before Paul, because Paul wrote the book of Romans to a church that was already there. I mean, we know that Peter died in Rome, so evidently Peter was, you know, uh, got to Rome before Paul, and he was a missionary. So there were a few, but most of the early Christian church was spread through, um, through you know, uh, salesmen, travelers, uh, merchants, you know, uh, just from talking and talking with people and, and being real with people. Um, and I think that there's kind of this idea that you have to pretend to be something you're not. Not just, oh, I have to be outgoing and an extrovert and I have to know all the answers. But also kind of this, I have to have it all together. I can't, I can't make any mistakes. I can't. I just don't really think that that's very reasonable. You know, you see, for instance, in the book of Acts, you see the whole church messing up by thinking that, the gospel was only for uh, Jews. And then when the Holy Spirit uh, baptizes uh, Cornelius and his household, they're, they're all amazed because, wow, this guy's a Gentile. And not only that, but he, he's, he's working for, for the enemy, for Rome. You know, and just a lot of different things there. Um, so I want to end with this with this verse here. I, I think that we've kind of gone long enough, I think. Uh, John fourteen twenty six says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remem remembrance all that I have said to you. Now, in context, this is more talking about um, the way that when they were writing uh, the Gospels and that kind of stuff, uh, the Holy Spirit was kind of impressing on them uh, and, and reminding them about their time with Jesus so that they could record things accurately. But it also it also is talking about a bigger concept there, that as they're being persecuted as they're you know being brought before the courts and before Rome and all these different things that they're the, the Holy Spirit will inspire them about what to say in that moment 
Um, and with that being said, it definitely does um, reach out to us too. This isn't a temporary kind of thing. This is this is for the church. As as you are being open to talking about Jesus in your own way, in a way that um, previous generations would have laughed at. <laughs> um, God will have a way of just guiding conversations. So what we do is we say, well, I've never led anybody to, to God, and so therefore, I never will. And there's just a big difference there. Just because you never have done something doesn't mean you're not any good at it, or you, you, know, you won't eventually do it. Um, so just, I, I hope that this was encouraging you. You don't have to be someone you're not. Um, what we're doing is, is we're talking to people about Jesus. We're giving people hope in a hopeless situation. And uh, I hope you kind of get what I'm saying there.